same violence and other kind of violence. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Across the country and here in Southern California, people will get a chance to meet their local police officers tonight during National Night Out. The event is held annually on the first Tuesday in August, and we're joined live by Matt Peskin, Executive Director of the National Association of Town Watch and the creator of National Night Out. Wow, Matt, I, tell us how National Night Out got started because it's been a while now. Well, it's been 40 years, so we're celebrating that anniversary. Um, we have an association of uh, crime watch groups and police departments across the country. And back in the early 80s, we decided we wanted to have a high impact, high profile type of event that would involve uh, not just crime watch people, but the community in general, because 99% of us are law abiding. So in the first. All right. So, um. As you guys can see, uh, they had the National Night Out event. This is a couple years after the defund the police movement, which is still ringing alarms to this day. And eh, I mean, not the biggest turnout, it appears, but it's, it's interesting to see how this impacted the overall community early years we had people sit on their front porches put on their front porch lights and you could see people waving to each other down the street and all and that was cool and people liked it but like as the years went on we promoted the block parties and the cookouts and the parades and the festivals just to generate some more interaction so it's grown quite a bit in the cities and towns that participate grow each year so it's a, it's a notice whose kids are not at this event the children who need this type of outreach the most. Great night. We're showing video that some stormtroopers, people go all, all out for uh, these national nights out, as you said, with the barbecues and the street festivals and that kind of thing. It really goes back to that idea of, of community policing, doesn't it? That, you know, police can rely on the community and the community can rely, rely on the police. And it seems that, uh, you know, if you pay attention over the last couple of years, some of that messaging has gotten a little lost. Is this a new chance to, to bring everybody back together? Yeah, sure. I mean, like if you look at the 1940s, 1950s, they, neighborhoods were safer because everybody knew one another. You knew the cop on the beat and everybody looked out for each other. So somehow over time that's gotten lost. So a night like this brings people out with local police under positive circumstances. It's not a burglary. It's not a traffic citation. It's not a medical emergency. Everyone is out to meet each other and have fun. And that's what builds relationships and that's what builds safer neighborhoods. It seems police and first responders are very supportive of National Night Out. Oh yes, I mean, it's, I, I will tell you that I would say that first responders are almost more excited about tonight than the neighborhoods. They love coming <laughs> out, they love, they love visiting. And the hardest part about it is to get officers from one block party to the next because people won't let them go. <laughs> they just keep talking to them. Yep. Um, how do the events vary from city to city? What, what will we see here even, you know, from city to city in Los Angeles? Yeah, it's, it's everything from a, a block party, like people will bring their own food, uh, drinks, sit around and talk to festivals that involve 1,500 to 2,000 people with rides, games, carnival events, and they're, they're so different, but that's, but our country is so different. So that's kind of what makes Night Out kind of cool. And, and we don't govern them. We say do what's best for your community. So most of these events, whether they're small or large, it's all festive fun and upbeat stuff that honors first responders and community leaders. That's I've lived in four different states in this country, and I've I've participated and covered them uh, in all the markets that I that I worked in, and they are all so different, but they all do have a big impact. So Matt Peskin, thanks so much for your work and for joining us this morning. Thank you, I appreciate it. Well, a woman involved in a rough arrest that was all caught on camera is now telling her side of the story. An LA County Sheriff's deputy threw JC Houston to the ground outside a Winco supermarket. Mm. It was captured on the deputy's body camera and cell phone video from a witness. Earlier, a security guard accused Houston and her friend of shoplifting. 
She was recording a deputy questioning her friend in the parking lot when another deputy threw her to the ground. Well, um, this is one of the reasons why, you know, they're not even prosecuting shoplifting in this day and age because, for one, it's so common, especially in Los Angeles. And for two, you get situations like this where he felt like he needed to use force. Um, obviously, she was giving him the... Uh, the you know the attitude and he he wasn't having it okay a lot of these guys they're tired of the shoplifting he threw her to the ground um as she was you know we didn't hear the whole uh the whole back and forth but i mean i would assume that she was going in on him cursing him out whatnot and the friend is over there getting questioned for shoplifting my question is were they actually shoplifting uh, we don't know that yet, but she says she suffered a fractured arm and a black eye. She says she was afraid for her life. I thought that I was going to be killed. He tried to kill me. Mm -hmm. And for what? Because I was taking a picture or taking a video of possibly some misconduct on an African-American male. So it appears that the the brother was the one who um, got her into this situation. Now, hopefully he wasn't stealing from what we see continually in the community. That may not be likely, but um, because of the police's actions or the the whole situation in general, it looks like the whole thing's going to get thrown out and there's going to be a lawsuit. I mean, it's it's just... We just saw the um, a night out celebration happen, but doesn't really change what's going on on the ground. Now her attorney wants both deputies fired, prosecuted for battery. She says they plan on filing a lawsuit against the sheriff's department and Winco. Woman caught on camera being thrown to the ground and pepper sprayed by an LA County Sheriff's deputy in Lancaster last month is now filing a lawsuit saying she feared the deputy was trying to kill her. He tried to kill me. You can't touch Stop. me. You can't touch Stop. me. And for what? Because I was taking a picture or taking a video of possibly some misconduct. Where on earth is it acceptable to punch a woman on face on the face? We're in America. The attorney for plaintiffs J.C. Houston and Damon Barnes calling for the. And what I will say though is, I mean, <laughs> a lot, a lot of it. Okay, where is it? okay to punch a woman in the face i'm not advocating for that but it, you know sometimes they do get out of hand now in this case it looks like she was just filming um but it, it's just a lot is building up especially in la with the crime these officers are at wits end they feel like they have no backing and you know i'm not trying to take either side i'm just kind of giving you guys the uh the the the, the sentiment of why there's so much hostility between citizens and officers. Um, it's getting rough in L.A., and I don't see it getting better. The deputy would be fired and charged with battery. Houston says she suffered a broken arm as well as black eye. Couple also asking for charges to be brought against a security guard who reported the alleged shoplifting incident at the Winco store. Uh, Winco will be listed because their employees uh, weaponize the sheriff's department with their false complaint of a robbery. It doesn't happen to white folks like this, and we're not going to have it happen to black folks like this. Right. Couple was arrested on charge. So um, let's just address that. You know, it, it it doesn't happen to white folks because they're not going into stores and mass looting like black folks are. I mean, let's just keep it a buck. So, were they stealing or not? That's the big question. And that's what we have yet to prove or disprove. But, I mean, I ain't gonna cap. I would not be surprised. Charges of petty theft and battery of store staff. The LA County Sheriff's Department confirms both deputies have been removed from their patrol detail while that investigation is ongoing. Yo, what's good, BGZM News 17 family? I'm at the corner of... Jesse Jackson and Marcus Garvey. 
and I got some bad news for you. As you can see, I lost my job. I'm out here living in cardboard boxes outside of boarded up vacant homes. YouTube said, I'm done getting money out here in these streets. They even took my funky ass suit. So anything right now would help. So go ahead and hit that cash app, hit that PayPal, hit that GoFundMe, hell, cop the merch. Or if you want to make the long-term commitment to the Jinquadius Jackson Fund, join the Patreon so that I can continue to put out top-notch content each and every day. Also, <laughs> check out the Rumble where there is absolutely no censorship. Link in the description box below. Hey, yo, 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 ain't that that, that nigga did Quavius? Yo, I recognize No, that's Quavius not me no anywhere. more. Hey, yo, run your pocket. Y'all tell me what they say. Do the opposite of Antonio Brown and take what all your What more do you want from me? As KTV crime reporter Henry Lee explains, the victim says she believes she was targeted by carjackers. Unfortunately, somebody like myself is a sitting duck. They look and they go, oh, look, little old lady in a nice car, let's get her. 73-year-old Elizabeth Gage says she was driving back to her Oakland Hills home when she realized she was being followed at about 12.30 Saturday afternoon. She had just gotten off 580 and was near Mountain Boulevard and Keller Avenue. She was driving her Mercedes SUV, the car behind her also a Mercedes SUV. So I moved over thinking, okay, let him pass me. He moved over. And that made me uncomfortable, so I drove a little faster, and he drove a little faster. So she called 911 while in the hills, but got a recording. All lines are busy. You'll be answered in the call in the order in which you, yeah. And all I could think of was, really, really. She went down the hill on Golf Links Road. She heard the same recording over and over again. <laughs> Can I say it? Sure. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! So as you guys can see. These super gremlins had this elderly lady in fear for her life. And unlike a lot of um, other elderly glider women, she put that thing into gear and she hauled ass. So, I mean, mad respect, okay? You know, a lot of elderly people in general would be caught lacking and freeze up on spot. She was like, uh-uh, this ain't finna go down like that. That's when I realized I'm on my own here. Gage got back on the 580 headed toward downtown Oakland at high speed. I was driving about 100, 105, yeah. Mm. I kind of played Frogger. I was going in and out and in and out of cars. I'm sure somebody thought I was crazy. She managed to lose them and went back home. No one ever answered 911. I was on hold with them until I pulled into my garage. Woo, so, <laughs> man, that's insane. Insane. The police didn't even answer. I mean, they have said in, I mean, pretty much in all over California, the police cannot help you. Just a half hour before her ordeal, her neighbor had his cell phone stolen by someone in this Mercedes GLA. Mm. Gage believes the same car was behind her. And about 6.30 Tuesday morning, a woman was carjacked of her white BMW by four men, also in a black Mercedes, at Mountain and Keller, the same spot where Gage first noticed she was being followed. I'm terrified that I'm, I'm living in the Wild West or when Rome fell, that we're <laughs> in a lawless land. Gage is a retired school teacher who's beat. And, I mean, I hate to say it, but I, by the looks of it, she most likely voted for this cancer this she says is far scarier i'm supposed to be in my golden years please leave us alone please leave us alone in oakland henry lee ktvu fox 2 news a woman is now sharing her frightening account of how she escaped a potential carjacking in oakland it all started when she noticed a car that was following her saturday just off the keller avenue exit off of Interstate 580, it quickly turned into a very scary chase that had her weaving through streets in the Oakland Hills and then back onto the freeway as she tried to throw the car off her trail. Mm. As she is sharing her story with us and with our Devin Feely to encourage all of us to think about what we might do in a very similar situation. 
I think the biggest takeaway from this story is that we all have instincts, that little inner voice that tells us something seems off. Some so, you know, what he's calling instincts, <laughs> we can easily say profiling, all right? She profiled the situation. She saw that um, you have a black Mercedes pulling up, no plates, full of ninjas with Pushaisi mask, Pushaisi mask, Pushaisi mask. And she realized that the super gremlins were on demon time. Something about this situation just doesn't feel right. Well, Elizabeth Gage, she listened to that voice and the steps that she took next may have spared her from a carjacking and perhaps even worse. There are just those times when you get that creepy feeling on the back of your neck and you think something is not right here. Elizabeth Gage got that hair on the back of your neck feeling Saturday afternoon while driving home from the grocery store. A black Mercedes with tinted windows and no license plate started tailgating her. At first I kept saying, you're being paranoid. You're being paranoid. The whole world is not following you. And then I realized, oh my God, this man really is following me. Elizabeth first noticed the car following her after she crossed through the intersection of Keller Avenue and Mountain Boulevard. The very intersection where Oakland police say a woman was carjacked at gunpoint early this morning. They came out of nowhere, I can tell you that. And my guess, this is Mountain, this is where the woman got it this morning. And I'm wondering if they weren't either parked alongside here or over there mm. and they see this nice Mercedes go up the hill and they think, okay. Thankful. Yeah, and they be in the cut. Oh man, I mean. Good thing that this woman is quick on her feet because she, I'm going to tell you right now, these super gremlins would have murdered her 100%. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind. Fully, Elizabeth didn't suffer the same fate. As soon as she realized that she was being followed, she decided that she would not lead her pursuers back to her home where she would be effectively trapped. I was saying it out loud, okay, you're not going to go home. What are you going to do? She called 911, waited on hold, jumped back on the freeway. The car followed. But she was able to eventually elude her pursuers and says she is eternally grateful that she listened to that little voice of caution. To see that it had no license plates and to see that it had tinted windows immediately. My <laughs> Let's keep it a buck. That's not what really triggered her. Come on. Feelers went up. Elizabeth says that she shared her story because she wanted to make the public aware of the threat, a threat that she believes is still ongoing. She wanted people to think about what they would do if faced with this very scary situation. Oakland police have been warning about a recent spike in violent carjackings across the city. You can see how they've jumped over a period of five years. The most recent police data shows 536 carjackings in the city last year compared to just over 300 in 2020 and 176 in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Security ain't even do shit. So you guys saw it there. Um, the Super Gremlins got off with a huge lick, ran into the Gucci store, Pooh Shiesty mask, hoodies and all. I told you the normalization of Pooh Shiesty mask um, are exactly why we are in the scenario that we are in today. Um, it's very easy to walk into a store, push shiesty mask and all, and, you know, not be questioned. Because you're following the CV protocol, which, man, the CV is just a whole, the whole scenario is just, it's, it's, it's crazy, um, which we can break down in another video, most likely, but this is not good. And this is continuing to happen over and over again. And I'm going to tell you right now. It's only going to get worse. Um, according to, uh, you know, <laughs> Los Angeles laws, if they didn't steal anything over $900 each, then they're pretty much in the clear and won't have to worry about suffering any type of punishment prosecution in the future. 
some people trying to film as if that is going to help. You saw the black security guard who <laughs> is walking, not even running. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't do anything either though. Like you need an armed guard or something because this ain't it. And it looks like they got off with a, another righteous lick. Told you guys before, you see that Pushaisi mask, Pushaisi mask, Pushaisi mask. Understand that you are dealing with a super gremlin on demon time. So actually, I wanted to get into the comments section because this was posted by Shannon Sharp's burner account. Obviously, it's a parody and he was laughing. Damn, they robbed the Gucci store in Beverly Hills. <clears throat> And look, I'm not a big fan of Gucci. Um, I mean, I think it looks decent sometimes, but I'm not a fan of the company. All right. And I know, you know, we all know that they mm, potentially could be involved in some extremely nefarious things with minors. Um, not everybody who works for them. Right. But um, individuals, which I've broken down in other streams, I'm not going to get into, but <clears throat> Um, I just want to read the comments to show you guys how lost we are as a community and the justification of um, thievery. So this woman tweets a meme. If you got to steal stuff, that means it's not meant for you. Um, and then somebody says, or it's too expensive. And then she goes, if it's too expensive for you, then what does that mean quickly? And then. Somebody says the amount of blacks underneath your comment thinking it's perfectly fine to steal is shocking. The number of videos posted of incidents like this should have already cemented that idea in your mind. That's hilarious. Um, it's wrong, but to be honest, these companies have child labors and, and stole from everyone. Labor has went up triple what it used to and wages haven't. It isn't right, but eh. So uh, obviously this uh, what appears to be white liberal doesn't really care um, because she says costs have gone up. So it's OK for people to steal. Um, they got away with it, though. So it was in God's plan for them to get a clean getaway. <laughs> and somebody goes, there is no God. OK. Um, Do you feel the same way when millionaires and billionaires steal resources from the impoverished and poor? So people are going to compare this to millionaires and billionaires, which she's lumping into, you know, a whole, I mean, come on, let's keep it a buck. Most millionaires work tooth and nail to become millionaires. <laughs> People steal diapers, pads, foods, and clothing. You see where I'm going with this, right? Um, this is a sister, but no, we don't see where you're going. You think these men stealing purses to wear? Uh, right, exactly. Yeah, they're stealing them to, well, they might wear them, honestly, but they're stealing them most likely to sell them. Gucci revenue is in the billion dollar range. They'll survive. This is a black man. Um, I mean, white people stole entire countries, so that's the argument. <laughs> Somebody said whites stole blacks from Africa. So, you know, I mean, this is the mindset. This is the mindset, man. Um, it's not looking good, honestly. This has become the norm. And obviously, social media doesn't think that this is a big issue. And that is why the community is going to stay right where we are. We have been stopped in our tracks as, when it comes to development and growth mentally all right emotionally and in many ways physically so we'll see